Drifting aimlessly upon the sea of consciousness, this is Random Random Thoughts. Thoughts. With your hosts, in no particular order, Chris Jones and Gamer Glow. This is your announcer, Baron Dixon, inviting you to join Glow and Chris and their random guests, whoever, for in-depth discussion about things and stuff. It's Random Random Thoughts. Thoughts. The podcast that boldly goes wherever. This is Random Thoughts 4. Why was there such a gap? I don't know. My name is Chris Jones. And we also have Gamer Glow. Gamer Glow. Yay, Gamer Glow. Wee. How are you, Gamer Glow? I'm I'm hanging in there. I'm hanging in there. Chris, I uh it's been a rough week, but you know how that goes. Mhm. I do know how it goes. I work in the same sort of a business you do. Um what's today's date? This is November. We're recording this just for a time frame, November 5th, 2011. And we, and, we, spe- and we have another we have another guest in here with us tonight. I was just going to say, introduce the guest. Oh, oh, we have our, our one of our better members at On the Air TV, uh, Suburban Rider, also known as Chuck, and he's with us tonight for our little random thought powwow. Yep, counting down the days until the uh, asteroid strikes the moon, and the moon splits in half. Oh. That is no, going to actually, be something to see in the sky. Huh? Asteroid and there's, yeah, it's a, it's a four-mile asteroid, and uh, there's a pretty much zero probability it's going to hit either the Earth or the Moon. And most people will be lucky if they, even with a big telescope, are able to see it. But it makes for exciting headlines. How big is it? The headlines about what if, four, what if, four miles four, wide. Yeah. Oh, four. four miles. They said if it hit the Moon directly, it would not even leave a crater that would be anything close to the biggest crater that exists on the Moon. So... It uh, would probably just make something neat to see through telescopes, but not much more than that. Here's what well, I. Well, I bet you if you're watching it through a telescope, you could probably see the dust fly up. <laughs> oh yeah, I imagine the dust would be with the moon having less gravity. The dust would probably hang for hours and hours, if not longer. Hey, that's right. Yeah, with the less gravity. You Does know, this asteroid it's... have a name? Oh, you know, I should actually go back and actually see what that article is. Well, you know, it doesn't have a name. It doesn't have a name like we would have a name. It's like K four five three two. You know, some that kind of name. <laughs> Probably is. I, you know, I don't recall any kind of name that really comes to mind. But I'm opening the article right now and see if they actually give the name. Yeah, I'm going to name. I'm going to. I'm going to name it. Oh, it's called. You know what Earth. it is? You're almost exactly right. it's asteroid two thousand five Y U fifty five. <laughs> uh, yeah, I knew it, had, it would have some kind of name like that. Let's call it Glow's Revenge. Yeah, Revenge on who? 6.28 p.m. it will pass. 6.28 on it's the 8th? It will pass 201,000 miles from us, and the moon is about 250,000 miles. So it's going to be about maybe uh, 80% of the way to the moon, so it's not coming anywhere near so the So it's going to pass. it's going to pass in between the Earth and the moon orbit. Yeah, it'll be about 50,000 miles away from the moon, and it'll be 200,000 miles away from us. I see. Interesting. Uh, we'll call let's call Bruce Willis just in case. Yeah. <laughs> Armageddon. Armageddon. And they said thousands of amateurs are going to track it, so it must be with a decent sized telescope. Uh, you'll well, be able to see it. It's probably going to be online and live feeds and all that sort of thing. It'd be interesting to to follow that. It really would. Yeah. Um, look at the enterprise. To, look at the enterprise to go in there and uh, throw some photon torpedoes at. As soon as you said that, a picture. calculated the orbit. If it calculated the orbit for it for the next 100 years, how can you do that? I don't even know how you can even do that. Well, the astronomers, Matt. And the scientists, can. Matt. Yeah, I guess. Matt. Soon it's as, all Matt. As soon as you yeah. said the Enterprise, that's the picture that appeared on my desktop. Oh my God! From the Ultimate Universe mod for Star Trek Legacy, the uh, USS Enterprise, NCC 1701. We need more power, Scotty. <laughs> So, Chris, yeah. what do you think of Star Trek Reimagined? Do you, did you uh, 
Were you able to appreciate the new movie with the new uh, imagining of the Star Trek universe without the... Uh, you really want me to... Vulcan well, well have you warned him about what happens when you talk to me about... Oh, don't, don't, get him, don't get him started on that. Oh, my God. <laughs> he he hates J.J. Abrams. I was not a big... Oh, okay. let, me just, let me just briefly summarize. I was not a fan of it. Uh, because I, th I think they okay. took the. the I didn't print. like him up until, up until Battlestar Galactica. I didn't like J.J. Abrams either, but I, I kind of got into Battlestar Galactica, the newer, not the old uh, Lauren Green version, obviously. But yeah. Anyway. Well, I think they took the franchise, the Star Trek franchise, in the wrong direction. And I guess J.J. <sighs> had this idea that he wanted to in, in, re envision it for a new audience. I suppose that has some yeah. merit. Not much in my not my book because when you think of the USS Enterprise, Star Trek, you think of what you grew up with and saw in the sixties and now on the remastered Blu-rays and DVDs with the computer enhanced effects. But the look of the ship is the same from that early era in the sixties. What did JJ do? He made it look like some reimagined garbage scowl from about thirty years after the or 40 years after the Enterprise was in existence, it looks like it belongs on a Galaxy Quest 2 with Tim Allen or something. It doesn't look like it belongs <laughs> on Star Trek. Well, if you're talking about the engineering room, too, I was kind of scratching my head about that one when they went down into engineering, and I'm like, what did they do, take a bunch of ductwork and piping and just kind of like randomly scattered about? And, and what was the water? What was the water thing for? Yeah, that's... There no. were a few things about it, too, that kind of had me scratching my head. I mean, I think I, overall I did appreciate it for what it was because, like it's, they said, it was a reimagining. It's a sci-fi really. movie. It's not a Star Trek movie. And it has characters called Kirk and Spock and McCoy and Uhura in it and Sulu and whatever. But it's not Star Trek. It's just not Star Trek. Can we not do that tonight? Well, one thing I, I've, I've asked everybody whether they appreciate the whole movie or not. That guy that played Dr. Bones McCoy, he was challenged. He was actually the actors. The first okay, time. let me. I stated this on some previous podcast with Victor and Phil and all those guys, yep. where I said that the actors were superb in their roles uh, as to what they yeah. portrayed, but the storyline mm -hmm. sucked. Now they could have taken yeah. those actors and put them on a ship that looks somewhat like the the Enterprise. They could have. There, there, there's several designs of the USS Enterprise out there that are reimagined from the 60s that are would be logically progression, logically put into a movie setting. Uh, Gabe Corner had a, a nice design where it looked it kind of like a almost like a TOS version of series battleship, and it was a really bad. I use the word badass, badass design. But it respected the original and kept kept it true to form. This thing JJ did. I don't want to swear too much because when I get starting talking on that, I do. So I don't want to do that. It's it's a sci-fi well, movie, not a Star Trek movie. So. Mo moving on. Yeah, let's our, move our, on. Our, see what, our, see what... One of our one, one of our uh, past podcasts and some discussion I had with Chuck and with you, Chris. In in uh, uh, is uh, the, our, our good friend Andy Rooney has passed away. Yeah, we did a whole TDD report focus on um, the uh, premise that Andy Rooney was probably one of the pioneers of what you would consider vlogging nowadays. Yes, uh, he started in 1978, I think was his first. Um, what do you call it? Vlog, I guess you. I guess you could say. Yeah. Yeah, the sixty minutes commentary, commentary at the end of the sixty yeah. minutes. Yeah. I was reading about. He had a good run over thirty years, and uh, and well, you know, he was a correspondent in World War Two as as well. And uh, as as a matter of fact, he was opposed to to uh, World War Two until he saw what the Germans did to the Jews in the concentration camps, and that changed his mind about that war. But uh, yeah. yeah. Well, were there any major commentators or journalists left that are World War II era? Did, or was he the last one, really? I don't know. He yeah. may have been. I mean, it may, may have been an era past too. Besides, you know, him passing away, it might be an era past of all the uh, journalists from that time period. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think I think um, 
I, uh, what's his name? Uh, the guy that used to be on, used to do the, was the CBS guy, and he and he said some stuff, and they took him out. What was his name? Walter Cronkite? No, no not Walter, Walter Cronkite. Cronkite. I didn't take him out. The guy that took his place. Oh. Uh, I got his name. Dan Rather? Dan Rather? No, not Dan Rather, no. Uh, he was also on, he's also on six, uh, 60 Minutes as well. I don't watch it enough to know. I can't think. Anyway, um... I think he was in World War Two. He's still living. Yeah. If the name comes up to me and I say I come out with this name, you all go, "Oh yeah." <laughs> Get, it's I getting busy. I think it is Dan Rather. Yeah. No. Okay. Possibly. I, say, I, I distinctly thought that Dan Rather took over from Walter Cronkite, but I'm not yeah. positive. Yeah, that's that's who it was, Dan Rather. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that was way back. Man, I remember when that happened. Walter Cronkite gave his last CBS News broadcast. It's a long time ago. Yep. Well, or remember you know when the newsreaders would actually do their own stories too. They weren't just paper readers. I mean, they would if they were reading something that was significant. Chances are they were actually out on the street pursuing it or doing some work on it. They weren't just you know paper readers. That's what makes yeah. it more authentic. Well, you see, yeah. they they were all whoever was the anchor of of this of the news program was also the editor, the chief editor of the news program. Yeah. Yeah, that's so. True. Mario sucks. Yeah, Mario sucks. That's another thing about random thoughts. We pick on we pick on Viper, Sean Viper. Because uh, we think that Mario sucks, and he loves Mario. So. Uh, yeah, I kind of like Mario and Luigi too. They're kind of cute. Although I never, I always like Sonic the Hedgehog better as far as playing the game. But I think the the Mario and Luigi characters are really cool. They're interesting, but I don't know why they're so popular. I never figured that out. I guess. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't find the games anywhere near as playable as the Sonic the Hedgehog games. But that's well, a, I don't know. That's you're a, you're you're in a you're in a, a majority, I guess. With oh, okay. uh, people, people that have like done random thoughts, yeah, we have two PlayStation threes in here. Ken, my son, just bought this new Sonic Generations that came out. He's loving that. That's a brand new game came out this earlier this week. And he's loving that. My grandson just got an Xbox three hundred and sixty, so uh, I'm finally finding out about some of the Xbox games. And I I snagged a p copy. I I saw the previews of this, and I always wanted it, but I wasn't going to buy it, you know, and then have to buy an Xbox to play it. But now that there is one. Um, a dollar ninety nine. I even got a discount on that. A copy of Perfect Dark Zero. So I scored it for a dollar ninety nine. Didn't even have to pay shipping because they had it at GameStop. And then oh. I used my uh, son in law's card to get another ten percent discount. So I think I paid a dollar eighty six or something for it. Oh gosh, that sounds cool. What was the game again? Say that so again. Even if it's only medi Perfect Dark Zero. So even if it's mediocre now, to me, um, it's one of those games to where you don't. For me, I would not have to really play the game the normal way to enjoy it. I could just play parts of the game, especially if yeah. you've got different types of weapons, and you can do sniper fire, and you can do different. You, you can kind of make it a game within a game for yourself, and that's right. the way I tend to play a lot of games. I don't tend to play through the storyline or anything. I tend to just take sections of the game and just enjoy. Well, that's it for what that's it is. that's what I do. I'm not a storyline player. I've never played the entire oh, campaign okay. through on Star Trek Legacy Glow. The game I modded. Wow. Never played it. Never did Bridge Commander. Never did Starfleet Command. Never played the actual campaigns. I was too busy trying to, uh, you know, see how the actual gameplay was from the scenario I wanted to play, not what they wanted me to play. That was my thing. Yeah, that's what I do with Driver Three too. I just actually play it my own way. I don't really get into the storyline. I just play it my own way, and I get on different motorcycles and just have fun driving through the street and doing stuff. Chris, you can close the sound if you want. Yeah, I think we'll have Chuck on again because I think I'd like to get him talking. Uh, if he wants to do kind of a, I think I'd like to have him maybe do at some point a, a, a kind of another summary of the Jesse James thing that we can talk about in depth on another random thought and sort of do a cross promotion with the on the air TV uh, content and uh, that might be kind of fun. Maybe talk. I'm not a biker, but maybe talk about bikes and the Harley Davidson stigma. And the fact that if my car made as much noise as a Harley, I'd get a ticket, but the Harley guy won't get a ticket. Uh, I want to debate that sometime, but not tonight. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've got 70s biker stories. I've got plenty of them and the way the culture's changed and everything. I mean, it's, 
Uh, biker culture is not anything near what it is. That'd be great. We'll, we'll do a biker, kind of a biker thing. This concludes Random Thoughts 4.